Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Nostalgic Saturdays and today we're taking a look at this phone. This is the Motorola A1200 or better known as Motorola Ming. And yes, you guessed it right, this is one of those flip phone thingies. So you can close this up like this and it becomes a compact little phone. Alright, so let me put the camera on the tripod and then I will show you guys its different features. Alright guys, so this is the Moto Ming. This was announced in December of 2005. So a fairly old phone at this point of time. And yep, yeah, it's got a resistive touchscreen. And before I go into any details, let me show you the design of the phone. So you can see it's got a translucent flip thingy here. And yeah, yeah that is the earpiece. And you can see those wires snaking off right over there. And back in the day, I used to be fascinated about this because you could actually see the wires going to the speaker. And yeah, this transparent flip thingy was awesome. So let me just close this and it changes into lock screen mode. And on the right, we have the voice command key. We have the camera shutter button. You can launch the camera just by pressing that. And unfortunately, the camera does not work on this phone. So let's quit the camera. And here we have the charging and the data port. Motorola branding. Yeah, unfortunately that uh, flap has broken off. This is a quite well used phone. Uh, here we have the microphone. On the left side we have the headphone jack. I don't think that's a headphone jack. That's look. That looks like a mini headphone jack to me. Oh crap, that rubber was so brittle. I just tried to take it off and the whole thing fell apart and some of it fell inside. Anyway, it does not matter. And again, we have the Motorola branding. We have the volume rocker and the uh, shortcuts key. So you can actually press that to unlock the phone. And then you have three options, real one, player, camera, and then you can hide the shortcuts menu. And now moving on to the back of the phone, we've got a metallic Motorola logo here. We've got slot for the speaker. And yes, this phone does have FM radio. We've got camera lens, there's no flash, and there's no autofocus on the camera, and it's a two megapixel camera. But the camera does have a little trick up its sleeve. It's got a manual focus dial here, so even though it does not come with autofocus, we do have manual focus. So you can see that's set to macro, and if you shift it to here, it is in landscape mode. Unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate this because the camera does not work, but yeah, we do have manual focus on this thing. And then we've got a slot for the stylus. This one comes with resistive touchscreen, so we do need the stylus. And yes, you guessed it right, it's got a user removable battery. Oh man. Alright, got the back cover open and unfortunately the plastic of this thing has become kind of sticky. Kind of sticks into place, so have to use a little force. Yep, there we go. It's kind of sticking from somewhere here. But anyway, we've got a 850 milliamp hour battery. Motorola BT50 and yes that is the original battery still holds charge so I took the battery out just to show you guys what's underneath here but as you can see we've got a micro SD card slot yes none of this proprietary rubbish we've got a proper micro SD card slot just like you find on phone nowadays yeah there you go that's a micro SD card slot 512 megabytes from SanDisk that's the original card this phone came with and none of this proprietary crap, I mean one of the reasons why I hated buying Sony phones is because uh, they use their own memory stick cards. Yeah, this one this one has an M2 card and these M2 cards and memory stick cards were a little bit more expensive than these regular SD cards for the same capacity. And once again we have the Sony proprietary charging and data port here and if this thing gets dirty the phone will stop charging. So you had to take care of these phones but this one has a mini USB job here so that's your mini usb data transfer and charging slot so no issues with that and i've just put some masking tape around here just to hide the imei number and the sim card number but yeah that's your sim card slot and just to give you guys an idea on how compact the moto ming is here's a size comparison with the samsung galaxy note 9 and look at the note 9 it looks humongous in front of this thing small phones do have their advantages they're light on the pocket and very very easy to carry Oh yeah, you can see how big the Galaxy Note 9 is compared to this tiny little uh, Motorola phone. Now first impressions, it looks like an ordinary phone with a translucent flap. But don't let the looks deceive you because this phone is running an Intel Xscale processor which is clocked at 312MHz. That's quite a lot of firepower for a phone that came out in 2005. 
and uh, guess the operating system any guesses well this one is running Linux yes Linux for a device which came out in 2005 that's before iOS and Android came into the scene and unfortunately Linux was the reason why this device was not popular I mean it did support Java based apps you can see I've got some Java based apps got Gmail app then we've got two games and we've got the Windows Live Messenger but if you remember back in the day in around 2005 2006 the market was dominated by Nokia phones uh, series 60 uh, Nokia phones like these and if you wanted an app you could find on Nokia Symbian operating system but you will not be able to find any apps for this phone so essentially this was just reduced to a feature phone and then again you could not play many games on it because it has a touch screen it does not have a proper keypad now coming to the display the Moto Ming has a 2.4 inch TFT LCD display with a resistive touch panel so yeah this is not a capacitive display and the resolution of this screen is 240 by 320 and this was a fairly common resolution back in the day the Nokia E61 also has the exact same resolution display although the quality of the Moto Ming is better than what you got on the Nokia again this is a business phone and my Sony Ericsson Walkman phone also has the exact same resolution display but the quality of the display was better on the Walkman phone but yeah overall this is a fairly decent LCD we've got good color reproduction I'm not sure how you zoom in because this is not a multi-touch display so I'm really not sure how to zoom in and there is no zooming in option here and if you double tap it yeah, it goes to full screen and let's see if we can zoom in here yeah no I have no idea but anyways because this is a fairly small resistor touchscreen writing messages on this thing was quite cumbersome alright so got the keyboard open so we have an English keyboard then we have the numeric pad handwriting recognition handwriting recognition wasn't that great then we got another keyboard here Chinese input but yeah this keyboard was quite terrible I mean if you were walking and if you tried to type on it I mean these letters are so small you just have to use the stylus so yeah this predictive text was there but still I'd rather type on this sort of keyboard I mean this was a lot easier to type on and even these alphanumeric uh, keyboards were quite easy to type on especially when you turn on the predictive text so yeah this keyboard was quite cumbersome and you can just imagine uh, typing long messages on this thing yeah. alright so let's move on to the camera now unfortunately you guys know the camera does not work but anyways gonna fire it up and show you guys the different menus you get in camera so this is your camera UI you press this button to capture a picture but it, I don't think it will be able to capture a picture uh, I think it's stuck or something yep all right had to restart the phone the phone gets hung up when you click a picture in the camera all right so let's fire up the camera once again I'm just gonna show you the menus oh look at that it's working <laughs> yeah it's not working fully but oh oh there you go okay so I had to restart the phone uh, not gonna click a picture this time otherwise it's gonna get hung up once again but that's how you change into video and picture mode it you change your resolution it's uh, just a 2 megapixel camera then that's your night mode and normal mode and then black and white different modes so off is okay then direct sun incandescent these are your white balance then record video and go to, let's go to setup and see uh, what's the maximum video size okay so we can record in 176 into 144 so that's your maximum uh, video size and you guys might have noticed already this phone does not have a front facing camera that's because this is not a 3g phone back in those days you did not have the concept of clicking selfies you would have the front camera exclusively for video calls just like on this phone yeah, you cannot take selfies with the front facing camera you can just do video calls with it
and I also want to show you guys the different themes so if you go to setup and if you go to color scheme these are your three pre-installed themes and no you cannot download more of these and this is the black theme this is the default white theme so let's change the theme it does take a fair bit of time to change the theme so that's your white theme unfortunately looks like did not change the wallpaper and then this is the blue theme but black is the best um, there isn't really no uh, competition to the black theme and then let's see what all different wallpapers you have so this is the wallpaper which is set right now then we have this one this mountain actually that looks pretty cool yeah look at that hello moto This one also looks fairly good, so it's going to change the wallpaper. Then you can also change the text size, screen calibration, backlight, power management. You don't want to use battery saver on these things because it will become even more slow. You can already see how laggy it is. But yeah, that's your setup. Uh, and then let's go down here. We've got real player for your media. And yes, you need to convert files if you want to play video on this. And you got calculator, all the standard phone stuff, sound recorder, yes, FM radio is there, your web browser is there. And then you can set up your email, calendar, and a dedicated file manager. Then you also have a photo editor. And then if you install any Java apps, they appear over here. And interestingly, this phone also came with a document viewer. So this one, uh, this one will view your PowerPoint word excel and pdf files and this used to work quite well this viewer uh, program and this is your phone dialer your messages that's your contacts i'm not gonna go there because there are still contacts on this phone which i don't want to expose on youtube all right let's do a mandatory speaker test now i downloaded this file on my computer from youtube audio library and i transferred it to the phone using bluetooth it's as simple as that so let's go ahead and play this so these are your volume buttons. Let's go to maximum volume. Now the phone becomes fairly slow once it's playing an MP3. You see that? You see how it lags? This is not optimized at all. And you can actually do other work while the music is playing. And once the flap is closed, you get this little menu. So you can play or pause the song from right over here. So this is the maximum volume right now. But yeah, I'm surprised to see how laggy it is uh, whenever it's playing some songs. But yeah, coming to the sound quality, I don't see anything wrong with it. The speaker is quite loud and crisp. But yeah, I do want to say that the operating system is definitely not optimized to run on this because these phones have a slower CPU and these ones work just fine while they're playing songs. Meanwhile, this one starts to lag. But yeah, I think this is a fairly unique phone and I still love it. It's a nice, uh, compact, compact phone. And if you still want to use it, you can. But unfortunately, there won't be any apps available. But you still get normal texting and regular cellular phone calls. And I think there's a fair bit of engineering that goes into producing a unique and different product like this. I mean, this is not your mass-produced Nokia Series 60 phone and neither it's your regular feature phone. Motorola would have custom-tailored the Linux operating system on this and would have done all the prerequisite testing and bug removal on the Intel hardware which powers this phone. So yeah, I think all this geekiness makes this phone an awesome collector's item. And yes, I do have the original charger for this phone. It outputs 5 volts at 850mA. And it has a mini USB connector here. But it's uh, and 
Alright guys, so that brings us to the end of this episode of Nostalgic Saturdays. I hope you've enjoyed and please follow me on Instagram and on Facebook if you want to see more content. Alright guys, so thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.